Hi friends, I welcome you all here at TNV Academy. In this session, we are about to discuss the clause 5.3 Organizational Role, Responsibilities and Authorities of International Standard ISO IEC 20000-1-2018 Information Technology Service Management. In this session, we shall cover all the requirements of clause 5.3 Organizational Roles, Responsibilities and Authorities in detail along with some examples for your convenience. As the requirement of the clause 5.3 depend upon the requirement of clause 1, scope and clause 5.1, clause 5.2, clause 5.2.1 and clause 5.2.2 of standard. I would like to recommend you referring clause 1, scope, clause 5.1, leadership and commitment, clause 5.2.1, establishing the service management policy, clause 5.2.2, communicating the service management policy, also for better understanding of clause 5.3. Let's discuss now about the outcome of this session. After completing this session, you will be enabled to understand and verify the implementation of the requirement of clause 5.3 of ISO 20000-1-2018. You will also learn that how organization objectives can be achieved through establishing and communicating the service management policy. You will also learn about the organizational roles responsibilities and authorities relevant to SMS towards achieving the goals of organization. Now, let's start with clause 5.3, organizational roles, responsibilities and authorities. The requirement of clause 5.3, organizational roles, responsibilities and authorities of the standard are, top management shall ensure that the responsibilities and authorities for roles relevant to the SMS and the services are assigned and communicated within the organization. Top management shall assign the responsibility and authority for a. Ensuring that the SMS conforms to the requirements of this document. b. Reporting on the performance of SMS and the services to top management. Let me tell you the document requirements for this clause 5.3 now. If we talk about the mandatory documents, service management policy should be documented and maintained. To meet this requirement, the records of communication of policy and internal or external training program to make organization aware with policy can be retained for future while improving the policy document. Now, let's start with clause 5.3, organization roles, responsibilities and authorities. This clause 5.3 of ISO 20000-1-2018 requires that top management provides adequate resources and allocates responsibilities and authorities essential to implement SMS effectively. A simple method of doing this is to define the organizational structure and associated hierarchies. Several methods like job descriptions, organizational map, charts, procedure, work directives, etc. can be used to define organizational structure and responsibilities within the organization. Please have a look on screen. There is figure 1, sample organization chart of software company. The intent of the clause 5.3 is to ensure that each employee understands their roles with respect to the implementation and reporting of elements of the SMS and maintain emphasis on consumer requirements. Descriptions of job, generally called as JD or job description, is an easy mechanism through which you can specify what trainings, qualifications and experience each job role requires. This will help you in getting the exact candidates while employing for a position and also ensure that the employee is clear on the job requirements and his or her responsibilities. These organization structure, role and responsibilities need to be communicated and deployed throughout the organization via orientation programs, capacity building, training, meetings, or through procedures or work instructions. Additionally, the top management needs to continuously work toward improving the processes and getting changes and improvements to the service management system SMS. Employees shall be encouraged to also suggest opportunities for improvements and the top management shall ensure that integrity of SMS is maintained when these changes are planned and carried out. As a conclusion, we can state that the guidelines under clause 5.3 define that top management shall assign the responsibility 
एंड अथॉरिटी फॉर इंश्योरिंग दैट द सर्विस मैनेजमेंट सिस्टम कन्फर्म्स टू द रिक्वायरमेंट्स ऑफ दिस स्टैंडर्ड आई एस ओ ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड डैश वन टू थाउजेंड एटीन इट ऑल्सो मैंशंस दैट टॉप मैनेजमेंट शेल असाइन द रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी एंड अथॉरिटी फॉर रिपोर्टिंग ऑन द परफॉर्मेंस ऑफ द एस एम एस एंड द सर्विस टू टॉप मैनेजमेंट नाउ कमिंग टू एन इम्पॉर्टेंट एस्पेक्ट ऑफ द स्टैंडर्ड प्रैक्टिस राइटिंग नॉन कन्फॉर्मिटी अंडर दिस क्लॉज फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट मी एक्सप्लेन वेरी ब्रीफ वॉट एग्जैक्टली इज नॉन कन्फॉर्मिटी नॉन कन्फॉर्मिटी रेफर्स दैट द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इज नॉट फुलफिलिंग ऑफ द रिक्वायरमेंट्स ऑफ वन और मोर प्रोविजन ऑफ द क्लॉज ऑफ द आई एस ओ ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड डैश वन टू थाउजेंड एटीन नॉन कन्फॉर्मेंसेज आर मोस्ट कॉमनली अनकवर्ड ड्यूरिंग वेरिफिकेशन इंस्पेक्शन और टेस्टिंग एक्टिविटीज इफ योर टेस्ट फाइंडिंग रिवील्स मिसअलाइनमेंट इन योर रिक्वायरमेंट्स दैट्स अ नॉन कन्फॉर्मेंस नॉन कन्फॉर्मिटी मे बी ऑफ टू टाइप्स माइनर नॉन कन्फॉर्मिटी एंड मेजर नॉन कन्फॉर्मिटी अ माइनर नॉन कन्फॉर्मिटी इज द फेलियर टू कन्फर्म टू अ रिक्वायरमेंट दैट इन द ऑडिटर्स ओपिनियन एंड देर इज नो फेलियर ऑफ द सर्विस मैनेजमेंट सिस्टम इट मे बी अ सिंगल ऑब्जर्व लैब्स और आइसोलेटेड इंसिडेंट वेयर देर इज अ मिनिमल रिस्क ऑफ नॉन कन्फॉर्मिंग प्रोडक्ट बींग रिलीज टू द कस्टमर अ मेजर नॉन कन्फॉर्मिटी वुड बी द टोटल ब्रेकडाउन ऑफ द मैनेजमेंट सिस्टम और वन ऑफ इट्स प्रोसेसेज or the failure to address a key iso 20000-1 2018 comment let me give you an example of non conformity here under clause 5.3 xyz is an organization working in it and communication sector and providing e-commerce and mobile application solution to customers keeping in considering a sensitive data hack in some government websites the top management instantly decided not to allow putting source code of any project work on web to avoid data breach they introduced a policy that programmers will take a backup on daily basis on external data storage device rather than storing codes on online vaults the policy was spontaneously made available to display boards digital kiosks inside office lobby and also documented as internal records the same announcement was also done through email and also amongst employees during the meetings during the audit auditors found and mentioned the following findings in audit report one an employee was found using his personal pen drive to keep the data backup at the end of the day the same pen drive was being used by him for various tasks including some of his personal affairs since it might cause a threat to official data breach and also transmission of computer viruses in office network auditor could find it as a minor non conformity root cause analysis it was found by the management that there was delay in store and dispatch section in supplying the external data storage device to each and every employee due to that delay employee started using his personal pen drive for data backup corrective action top management give an instruction to the store manager and to arranged external storage disk to the employee instantly so that he could start taking backup at the end of the day corrective action plan it was decided and added to the policy by top management that each employee must be issued a data storage device by store manager at reporting time in office and must be returned back at evening once the task of data backup is over by the employee now let me explain how to write an effective non conformance report to achieve the main goal of an effective non conformance report you should follow some guidelines which i am describing in detail now one you should seek and record evidence that top management is taking a hands on approach to the management of sms be prepared to constructively challenge top management's commitment to service management principles and show their commitment in iso second auditing this tier of management is likely to be a new experience for many people so it is important that you have a good understanding of management activities in order to effectively engage with them three if it is evident that top management is not involved with the service management system and iso standards a major non conformance is likely it is a recommendation that auditors should look for evidence of management commitment during certification audits auditors should look for evidence that top management has a hands on approach to
to the management of their SMS during interviews and auditing other requirements. Example, context of the organization, policies and objectives, management review minutes, resources, etc. You can find the evidence of top management involvement in business strategy plans and meetings, environmental goals and communications, information provided on the organization's website, annual reports, management meeting minutes, other documented information, management involvement must now be demonstrated and cannot be simply confined to annual management reviews. During internal audits, auditors should ensure that they are well prepared to interview the top management in the respect of their commitment to the SMS. A good understanding of management related processes and language used by top management can be helpful to engage with management on a range of concerns. I hope these guidelines will help you in writing an effective non-conformity report in future. Now, it is also important to discuss about the common mistakes made by auditors while ISO audits. Some of the common mistakes made by auditors while auditing are putting questions which are irrelevant for the organization. Sometimes auditor start thinking for the option while auditor needs to understand the client process and to decide if the client can achieve the result of the management standard system through their own process. Auditors start consulting the client which is out of the reach of the auditing. Auditors start expecting those documents and records in clause wherein this may not be mandatory. Auditors impose their opinion without facts. Auditors report findings but don't provide evidence. Auditors tick off checklists without considering the bigger picture. Auditors believe the paperwork and ignore the facts. Auditors feel obliged to find errors. Auditors allow cost cutting to starve the audit. It is highly recommended that being an auditor, you should avoid these common mistakes while doing ISO audits to make it successful implemented. Dear friends, we have now come to the conclusion of this training session. See you soon with an exciting new topic. Till then, goodbye.